Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Count Christo and this is some more details about the upcoming grand strategy game, Grey Eminence. This is looking like a fantastic, fantastic game coming up from a brand new team, including three members that worked on Mayo and Taxes and they have been saying a lot, a lot on the Discord. I have been attempting to collect loads of these different dev comments, break them down by category, and then create a document so that we can keep track of all of the exciting new information coming out about Grey Eminence. Before I start, I will mention the link to this doc, which will be a living document. I'm going to keep updating it until there's like an official FAQ with all this info in it, which is coming soon. Um, so the link to this document is in the description. Feel free to use that to keep up to date on all the new stuff. Uh, also, I'm maintaining a socket second document, which I cannot show you because that's about all the details the devs have revealed to the patrons only. So if you want to get the lowdown early on all kinds of extra info and ask your own questions directly to the devs, become a patron. The link is in the description as well as the link to the Steam page where you should wish wishlist the game, the Reddit that you should sub to, the Twitter you should like, the Discord you should join. All kinds of great links down there. But, without further ado, let's get into this. So, the first one I wanted to highlight, because this is just such a great statement. <laughs> to give you a sense of scale, we've got several megabytes of game design wiki written for everything that's going to be in the game. They have a vision, a plan, it's realized, it's organized, it's looking promising. So, let's take a look at the kind of level of detail we can expect to see in Grey Eminence. They've got 1,000 times more provinces than Victoria. I'm guessing you have to do some simplification, right? To which Jordan hits back quite the contrary. Not only do we have two orders of magnitude more tiles, two orders of magnitude, holy hell. We also have more demographic categories, such as gender and age. They also go into detail here that it does all fully break down. So you can have, you know, a particular class broken down by culture, broken down by, um gender, broken down by age, so you can have an old, commoner, Greek, orthodox woman. Like, that's the degree of complexity we're talking about here. It is insane. It's not black and white. There are limits, but it's all, it's dynamic. You can have pops, population, no abstracted, you know, pop units, like the nonsense that goes on in Stellaris. This is one person, one pop land, baby. Obviously, visually representing it is a bit of a challenge, but they're working on it. And you can have, yeah, exactly, an exact number of Greek Sunni commoner women. That's crazy. That is crazy. How does your pop sim system simulate modern society? Because peasant, commerce, nomad, slave doesn't seem to simulate the industrial age. And he says, stay tuned for Population Dev, Dev Diary. It's all gonna be there. More details coming, but ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. A fair question. Why add gender? Isn't it always just going to be kind of 50-50? It won't vary a huge amount, but it's worth noting. There's a huge imbalance, and it has a significant... So, if there's an imbalance, it can have a huge socioeconomic impact. Mostly wars after men die, so that makes sense. If you're off gallivanting around doing a world conquest, you might end up with too many dead guys. I believe that was one of the things that happened in the early Islamic conquests. They had so many of the men dying in the wars and things, and I believe... I could be getting my history totally wrong, but I think that's part of why early Islam adopted a certain degree of political me, but now I'll get all kinds of comments telling me more about that. This was what I heard. I think that's right. Anyway, there is going to be, graphically speaking, so here's, actually, this can, this can go under map, really. There's loads of details on the map. So, tragically, I do have to inform you that the image you see, uh, this side, sorry, the camera's inverted, is CG. That is not what the map will look like exactly in the game, but obviously it will be touched up. They want it to look really good. And the transition between when you're super zoomed in on a certain map mode looking at hexes to zoomed out looking at a very different reality, they don't always just want you to be seeing the hexes exactly. And the data on this map is drawn from the game. Uh, yeah, blending smooth transitions. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. Also, the map borders you can see up there are, have been procedurally applied to this system. They're still going to be cleaned up and, and all that good stuff. Intrigue. So this is something that's obviously very lacking from a game like EU4 that's quite fun in CK2, but I mean, or CK3, but could go further beyond. There's going to be a dedicated dev diary. Intrigue is a core feature of the game, and rest assured they've put a lot of thought into it. Oh, baby. That sounds promising. What religions are they adding to the game, one user asks? All of them. 
all of them, says Sean. They're going to have all of all of the religions. So they're going full on complexity. And here we go. This, this is the mic drop moment. States within states. E4, you play as a state, right? And you can play as a subject to a state, but more or less, you just play as states, right? We definitely want people to be aware that they can play as any country, not just top level ones. As they said, currently we've got two layers of subjects, but that's just inherited from MNT. There's nothing mechanically stopping us from adding more layers. To which I asked, to try and clarify this, can I quote you as, the nations displayed on the map can, and often do, have countries existing within them, such as the HRE or Japan. Players can play as these subjects, and subjects of subjects. To which he says yes. Boom. It's like CK. You can play as subjects of nations. That's so cool. That takes it again to the next level. If you're familiar with the non-unitary states, as in, you know, fractured, you can play as subsections, this is something like that, with lots more interactions and possibilities. It's not a fixed hierarchy. That is insane. Not only the HRE was like this in Europe, for example, France. In 1356, this is the situation in pretty much every country on the map. Holy hell. This is going to be good. <laughs> so, you know, the HRE kind of stuff going on in EU4? It's something, you know, it's not like that exactly, but something like that in most countries in the map, really representing that kind of, it's all, it's all fragmented, there's no centralization, that kind of thing. And yeah, the HRE is a solid co color. Just to say it, it may look like one from far away, but you don't want to know how it looks underneath. That is a fragmented beast. And this was something I was wondering about in the previous video. So, war. Armies will be present on the map, but it won't be micromanaging. More on that in the dev diary. And they'll say that total war is not the only form of conflict. Limited engagement, border skirmishes, ho ho ho. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works out. On mechanics, there are no HRE specific mechanics. They'll have some kind of elective monarchy mechanics. They don't want to restrict mechanics to specific countries. They're going to be building things dynamically. So theoretically, you could have, you know, an HRE wherever. You could uh, have one emerge in Russia or something like that. And there are boats, confirmed, and there are rivers. Yes and fuck yes, apparently. So I'm guessing that means navigable rivers, which is really cool. Uh, how does colonialism work? TLDR, there'll be lots of different types and approaches to colonialism. That's very cool. We'll try our best to model them faithfully. They can't say more just yet. Fair enough. In general, their philosophy is that a mechanic makes you want to save scum until you don't get hit by RNG. It's not a great mechanic. Obviously, we can't remove RNG from a game entirely, but there are lots of clever ways to go about implementing it. So low RNG. I love the sound of that. Events are not hard coded to a particular year, but specific hair, but to specific conditions. And this way they can allow for emergent gameplay. Heck yeah, that sounds amazing. Changing over time. I know it's too early for specifics, but you guys plan to have mechanics that change across time periods. An example off the top of my head is feudal levies at the start and phased out replaced by standing armies. To which they reply, absolutely. There's no way to cover 1356 to 1956 without changing up the mechanics. Mechanics that change as the game goes on, maybe as tech advances, that would be so cool. That that's that's the main challenge I see for this game, honestly. That's an incredible, incredible time frame. Being able to have it shift from the kind of feudal age to industrialism to modern warfare, that's gonna be absolutely crazy. Now, multiplayer hadn't mentioned this so far, but will multiplayer be a thing? Absolutely. Multiplayer confirmed, you will be able to play this with your friends. People are curious about the inspiration, the relation to PDX, and the relation to Mayo and Taxes, so let's clarify that. They can tell you they've been designing mechanics for this game since 2018 and were surprised when I saw Victoria 3's dev diaries considering very similar versions. <laughs> so some of the mechanics may seem familiar to those of you who've been following Vicky 3, which is cool. And this bit was cool, and I should actually move this to uh, Warfare. Let me, uh, let me shift this up here. How do you deal with set piece battles and then doing fronts in the later part of the game? And they say they can't comment on that yet, but they will say Vicky 3's team is gonna wish they'd come up with the solution that we've devised. The idea that we can transition from set piece battles to frontline warfare blows my freaking my mind. That sounds incredibly cool, and I for one, I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, 
Graeminence is its own thing. You might see mechanics that you might recognize from Vicky 3 or Hoy, but that's just because those mechanics happen to align with our design philosophy. And from the MNT, that's right. Some of the MNT's uh, stuff was an initial inspiration for Graeminence back in 2018, but that was MNT 2.5 and it's obviously old. And it's its own team that some MNT members have joined. So I hope that makes it clear. It's not, you know, a, it's not like one department of the MNT team is making this or anything like that. It's a completely separate entity. Unrest. This is, I know this is very specific, but apparently unrest can come from particular classes, particular cultures. It's divided by various factors, we'll see. Characters. This game has characters. They're not going to tell us too much, but there are characters and more details will follow later. Exciting stuff. So basically, we know that there will be this all, I mean, all of this population mechanics and stuff layered in with some of the uh, the character mechanics of, say, like a CK2 or an Imperator or something. That's amazing. That's going to be fantastic. They've mentioned that this mo the game is built from the ground up with modability in mind. And when they release the world editor, it will simply be included in the game. That means that the way in which they created the mod is available to us. So we will be able to freely create our own maps just in the same way they have, which is so cool. You can envisage all kinds of really awesome mods for this, like, you know, Middle Earth mod, all that kind of stuff. So that's most of the stuff about the game itself. If you're leaving us here, Patreon link is in the description. Support this amazing project. The Discord links, all that as well, is all in the description of the video. But now let's take a little bit about the look of like, what's the state of the company? What, what's it going on? When's the release coming? Is there gonna be a beta? What's the situation with localization? A few of these things. They're paid, they're paid members of the company. This is not like a hobby project. They're, they're paid members of this company. Uh, they're open to publishing deals, but they don't want anyone who would infringe on their ability to release it in a polished, non-rushed state. They're not going to sell out and then release it early just to try and make a buck. They reckon that the game will release at least a year from now, maybe more. It depends how the crowdfunding campaign goes. So if they get super, super funded, which would be, you know, frankly unlikely that they got all their money they'd need to do this, but, you know, maybe, then they could all work on it full time. And then, of course, it will come out sooner. The game is not currently in a playable state, but most of the back-end simulation work is done. They've got the hardest stuff done, the core simulations like population and economy. So if you run an Observer game, you can currently see population and economy interacting with each other. And how far they're along is difficult to say. They've been in development for about two years. They need at least a year more. How long exactly will depend on various things. Until now, they've been able to develop in complete secret, but our starting capital is close to running dry. More specifics are explained in the first dev diary. Yeah, but they've had to secure funding for which we needed to announce ourselves. Not a liberty to say too much more, but the main reasons we're going crowdfunding is we don't want to be directed by money people. Thus far, we've developing completely on our own resources. That all makes sense. In terms of translation, they're developing the game currently in English only. They're a small team. It makes sense, but... It's very possible that few people in the future will be able to translate and provide localization in different languages, as well as potentially mods that could add that kind of language support to the game. They've built it, obviously, so that it's mod very mod friendly. That kind of thing seems very plausible. Start dates. There will, on release, be one start, it sounds like. That obviously makes sense. Come on, who plays anything other than the start date in E4 and Hoi and all that? They give lots of reasons, which you can read in the doc if you like, but yeah, just one start date. That's fine. Who cares? No one's gonna I mean, just play the first start date. That's fine. And when can we expect the next dev diary? Soon. <laughs> Soon. We hope to see it in the coming weeks, but we just don't know. In the meantime, I'm Camp Christo and I will keep you up to date with any new public information. And if you want to get that sweet, sweet private Patreon information, the link is in the description. I would like to add that because I'm shilling it so much, I feel I need to clarify I'm not officially associated with this project in any way. I am just someone that supports it, thinks it looks incredibly cool. And I'm look for, looking forward to getting my hands on a grey eminence. Let me, let me centre this if I can. Where's it gone? There it is. Boom. Grey eminence. Awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe for more grey eminence content coming soon. I will share all that I can share with you as more details get revealed. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you next time.